after that leg break, he got jacked. Ripped. Just yeah. gigantic. It's generally the result of the exogenous hormone use. Is Conor McGregor juiced to the gills? Well, Oi, there is not going to be a f***ing Mike Israel here. Because me, Conor McGregor, we're going to review me diet, me f***ing training, and maybe even me drug cycle. How f***ing dare you, laddie? You better f***ing stay tuned. Water. The first thing I would have in the morning is water, then I'd stretch, and then I'd get my breakfast. Eggs, potatoes. What the fuck are potatoes? God damn, I thought I was going to do an Irish accent. I'm out of my f***ing league on this mother. Uh, informative. You know, maybe some mushroom. Sounds like a good morning routine. Q Huberman. Hubes, where are you at, baby? How many um, showing his eyeballs to the light minutes is he away from ultimate health and longevity? You know, a green juice, a spinach and kale type of juice. Or it could be like spinach on the side. Or then maybe like some fruit, a strawberry. It always baffles me when people want the details of the specific foods that athletes eat. I want macros, motherfucker. I want your daily activity. I want your macros and calories. Ask about it, but everyone's always obsessed. You eat fucking mushrooms, you're gonna be a fucking big man like me, winning fucking world championships. And if you don't eat them, son, well then fuck you. Ugh. A strawberry smoothie or like strawberries and, you know, maybe some watermelon. Or I think he's just listing off random foods. I could even put a fucking pizza in a smoothie. And why fucking couldn't I? Who's gonna fuck and stop me, you. The camera guy's like, not me, sir. Pineapple, and that would be a good fueled breakfast, fully fueled. I do breakfast, have the pre-workout and that, and then I usually would work out, yeah. I don't understand what he said. Did he say walk out or work out? Scott, you are genetically Irish, help us. It's a workout. Oh, you fucking working out? Not this fucking nary, bambi pamby stuff you've been doing in the fucking States, mate. Oh, I'm never going to be able to go back to the British Isles again. Did I just say Ireland was part of the British Isles? I'm definitely getting shit from that. I would walk out, I'd come home, then I'd eat, you know, my lunch, whatever that would be. Maybe some rice dish, maybe a root veg. Root veg. Mm. Maybe sweet potato mash and maybe some chicken or something like that. Rice and veg and potato mash and some chicken. My man eat them carbs. So, yo, good news. He is definitely fueling up for combat sport training and not doing any kind of fasting, vegan, keto, carnivore nonsense that uh, a lot of mixed martial artists actually try every now and again. And um, it's not ideal. Again, I go back to the structure. Wake up at a certain time. Structure. I love the Irish accent. I can't get enough. Irish people, anything you say is magical poetry. I don't care what it is. Whatever you're saying, I'm listening. And little do 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 that shit's playing in my head. Leprechauns and green fields with meadows and just good old-fashioned drinking and violence. That's what's come to mind. Uh, but on a serious note, you guys are the f***ing bomb. I got, man, Scott, if I said I was Irish, would you kiss me? Absolutely. And I'm back That's in the game. You think. I have all sorts of parts of my... I'm going to throw up talking about that. All right. Train at a certain time. Structure is the key to, 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 to real success, I feel. Connor is under some wise shit. Structure is the key that are so important. A lot of times, people who are amazing at sports don't have much of a structure to their training or their diet. And they just get by on just training a lot and eating plenty and just raw athleticism, which is dope. The thing is, Connor has all the raw athleticism in the world. But on top of that, when you add in structure, you can take that 80% good approach you're taking just by eating plenty and training hard and make it a 90-something percent approach. Is it night and day? No. If you have the ultimate training structure and you don't have a lick of athleticism in your body, like your boy, I blame entirely my Jewish heritage for that. And Natan Levy, Israeli pro MMA fighter, if you see this, yo, uh, I guess, I guess you got the lucky genes, man. I don't have any coordination. But if somebody like me had no fucking talent, if they did all the shit right and had the deep structure, they would get, well, 20% better. But if you start at 20% total, now you're 40%, and that's where you cap out. And people look at that. They look at the guys in the gym who don't have the talent, who don't have the best genetics, and they're trying really hard with all the structure. And you can be illusory to be like, 
Structure doesn't do shit. Look at that guy. He's all structured. He sucks. But if you apply structure to talented individuals, you take them from being very good to supreme. And supreme is two things. One, where you want to be if you want to win shit. And two, that one company that Asians really like that makes like a brick or something. Oh my, what is that thing? What the f***? Is he lifting a power rack? It's like a self-balancing dildo bar for the shoulders for presses. I love it. That's great. And full range of motion. And he's controlling the eccentric plenty. It's like doing it behind the neck press, but you're leveraged in front. This is dope, man. He's got access to some cool shit. Look at me f***ing shoes. What color are they? Max the other guy. You better f***ing zoom in on me shoes. There's only one color that I can see and you fucking guessed it. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's when he got his foot f***ed up. First of all, what's up with the collared shirt? Just an aesthetic thing for me. Second, there's a lot of swinging going on, but not a whole lot of muscle contraction. I'd like to see some slower, more controlled reps. But it's not the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And it's amazing that he's in the gym uh, working out so soon after an injury. You know, once the doctors clear you for training for the rest of your body, you can spend many of the months healing from the injury that you do have, building the rest of your body to peak physical perfection and beyond. So in some sense, an injury is f***ed. I mean, really, in the most off, you know, most straightforward sense, an injury is a f***ing terrible thing. On the other hand, anytime I get hurt, I reframe quickly, as quickly as I can in my head, this is an opportunity to work on the other parts of my body that were not f***ed up. And because you generally, outside of getting run over by one of those asphalt trucks, don't f*** up all of your body at the same time, there got to be something you can train. Connor's doing an amazing thing here by getting in the f***ing gym. They f***ing broke my leg. I'm going to be working on my f***ing arms then. Amazing. Great idea. Some of the best athletes in the world, you can't keep them down. They get hurt. People write them off. They train everything else. And when that injury heals, they train that shit too. And they come back 2.0 style. Better. Some of them even use the RP Hypertrophy app. Interesting. I wonder what that would be like. for muscle growth is never going to be the same. Conor McGregor body evolution makes you wonder if he is all natural after he broke the leg. Oh, f***ing AI TikTok announcer noise. What I feel like when my friends go out. Shut up, Stacy. Narrate your own f***ing TikToks. No, I'm weighing 85 f***ing kilos, ain't I? Before I see maybe more of his stuff of him being juicy, I will say this. Is Conor McGregor juiced to the gills? Well, I think he's like, what, 5'10", Scott the Video Guy? Yeah, so he's 5'9". When you have excellent genetics and you spend much of your time doing combat training and dieting like a mother to make super low weights that he was always making. When you decide that per an injury and a change in your priorities temporarily, you want to just lift weights a lot and eat a bunch of food, getting to 85 kilos and roughly the same body fat as you used to be in the 70s somewhere when you were fighting, it was just not that hard. And it kind of comes naturally because finally you're lifting five days a week instead of lifting three days a week and doing 30 hours of MMA training, which is insanely catabolic, by the way. It just burns muscle off your body. It's so much high intensity work. When you curtail that or cut down basically to zero, you start lifting weights instead and you start proper putting away the food, the potatoes or whatever the he said. Eggs, potatoes. Then you can get quite big. There's nothing about his physique that I've seen yet as of the current time of this video that tells me he's for sure sauce to the gills or to put it more scientifically, a high probability of that fact. I'd have to see some compelling shit of him weighing 100K, 110K, then I'd be like, okay, fine, fine, fine. We're on some bullshit. But, you know, 85K, man, you know, if I saw every guy who was 5'9 and weighed 185 with some abs and thought he was on drugs, I'd be like, most of you desperate, pathetic motherfuckers on YouTube, you just have shitty fucking genetics. Fuck. You look at Connor after that leg break, he got jacked. Ripped. Just yeah. gigantic. Yeah. Like 200 plus pounds, it looks like. Just gigantic. Like 200 plus pounds. Guys, at five foot nine, being 200 plus pounds with 
sort of abs is very impressive. But for someone who spent maybe a year or two lifting weights super hard and who used to fight and no longer does, it's definitely possible to do without drugs. Now look, if he's on gear, I'll eat my f***ing words. And also, you know, he probably is on gear, but like, you know, it's not something you you automatically say he's for sure sauced up. I think guys will see some other f***ing gain like five or 10 pounds of muscle and they're like, you see, Dr. Mike, he's on steroids. Uh, relax. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. If you guys are enjoying this video, you might like the fact that we have a longer, more extended, even more uncut version in our member section. And if you have money, we'll take it so that you can have fun watching that video. <laughs> Getting kicked by a world champion MMA guy, all that. And then we run over and we push the sled. Okay. I have a little bit of a problem with circuits in general, and this one in particular. Circuits in general are very popular among lots of people who are in combat sport, because the people who are in combat sport generally and very understandably do not like to train with weights, do not like for it to take a lot of time. So they generally try to spend a very small amount of time and make the thing as fun and mixed in to their sport practice as possible but that dilutes the value of that thing. So it's not ideal to do circuits in most cases. If you have energy systems demands for mixed martial arts training, the best way to attend to them is to do very hard cardio or to do very hard fighting related drills. Things like hitting the heavy bag, hitting the pads, hitting the pads while wearing a weight vest and having to do lots of footwork and move around. Fighting or sparring with, or even just very gentle, but quick sparring with multiple opponents at the same time. That gives you all of the physical qualities you want from the conditioning aspect. And then it gives you tons of absolutely real world, super specific combat skills and tactics and pacing that you can use in the fight. And then you take your lifting and you understand that it does something very separate. It makes you some combination of bigger, stronger, and more powerful. And then you do, well, things like three sets of three or three sets of five in the squat, in the push press, in the clean, in the row, in the pull up, take a Smith machine, throw that bench as high as you can, catch it. That is the best kind of training for mixed martial arts and just combat athletes in general. You only have to do it two to four times a week, and it's only going to take 45 minutes at a time, and you'll get everything you need out of it. But you rest in between sets normally because you want to maximize how much force you're producing so that you can work on your ability to produce force. So it's important to see the training process for mixed martial arts, like any sport, in a systematized manner. You pull out every subcomponent that you need and you go, how do we best train this one? How do we best train that one? How do we best train that one? And then how do we integrate them into the whole? Integrating into the whole, which sounds sexual, but I assure you is not, is easy because that's just what your live work does. You put on the pads and you just f***ing spar one, two, three other opponents. That's live work. That's what integrates all the strength and power and mobility and flexibility and cardio. That training gets integrate, integrates everything no problem. So then the other challenge you have is how to train all of it ideally in its own little world as a subcomponent. When you start mixing conditioning work, like pushing the sled with strength work, like doing pull-ups, you just degrade the value of the strength work and that person never becomes quite as strong and as big as they could have been. And the conditioning work can be a lot harder than just kind of leaning into a sled and sled pushing is just not that hard. If you want hard sled pushing, you're going to have to do a lot of reps of that shit, or it's going to have to be a really heavy sled. And then I'm not even sure what we're training anymore. Nitpicky, but nonetheless, trying to get you guys a little bit of knowledge. And then we sort of leisurely jog over. Well, first of all, Conor McGregor's arms are long as f which really helps. Uh, it's one of the reasons why he's the best in the world. Reach is a big deal. His technique is actually quite good. Full range of motion. This is excellent. 
Uh, again, the only nitpick I have is the running around doing various circuits um, is not optimizing the what do you want out of the training. It's just not. That was very good. Heavy medicine ball throws. You guys will notice how he's following through in the movement. His hands almost touch the ground at the bottom. A lot of people will get the medicine ball up there and just kind of go halfway down or release it and just kind of like, uh, and then it just dumps down. Halfway efforts are total bullshit in serious sport training. We're training with a movement like medicine ball slams for one reason, power, the ability to produce a ton of force rapidly. And the way you produce power both in training and in an actual fight is allow time for that acceleration to occur. Put a crazy amount of what's technically known as impulse force times time into that object, which means you follow through and stick with it to the very end. That way, if you have to punch someone, you're not going to punch and just do this. You're going to punch and follow through their face to get as much energy delivered to their brain as possible, making them have unhappy thoughts. And again, because the purpose here is to train power, it would be better if Connor rested between these exercises so that he could really show off some power. And especially with power, which is force times velocity. We know from research that power is best elevated, it is best improved if every repetition you do to train it is at least above around 90% of your peak ability to generate power in any one rep. So if by the time that he gets to medicine ball slams, he's already at 85% peak power on the first rep because of all the shoulder presses and pull-ups and, uh, uh, and all the sled pushing he's done before, it's definitely going to give him some utility, but not close to the most he could be getting if he treated this workout as a standalone, took one or two minutes rest between each set, one or two minutes rest between each exercise. It's going to take a little bit of time, but to do something well, dare I say close to optimally, you're going to have to take some time. So on the nutrition side and the training side of what I have observed, I give Connor a comfortable, though generous, but comfortable nine out of 10. Yeah, some really good stuff in there. Just a little nitpicky with the organization and the prioritization and taking rest breaks between the heavy lifts and taking the sled pushes and just tossing them to the side. Um, now, on the much more important scale of being a fucking full-blooded Irishman, to make your fucking people proud. 12 out of eight, my man. All right, see you guys next time. If you guys like this video, that video right there, YouTube thinks you like it and the algorithm knows everything.